Hey, this is Al from Transformational Gaming. Please comment, like, subscribe. And without further ado, we have the new PlayStation 5 reveal. Now, they didn't necessarily call it that. They just said that it was a PlayStation 5 discussion or whatnot, right? But we all knew what was going to happen. And they had their finger on the pulse of how people felt about the PlayStation 5, none, none the least. So, <clears throat> excuse me for the cr crudeness, I guess, or the craftsness of this video because this one is not going to be really edited because I want to go ahead and get my opinion up and then I'll probably have a more holistic, uh, more fine-tuned, uh, more detailed uh, take but this is kind of reaction this is kind of late reaction because <laughs> it's been like I want to say about about three hours since the program went off but I did want to get up something about my reaction my first reaction to the PlayStation 5 revealed and I like to say if all in all because I was kind of looking at some digital foundry stuff and they was kind of analyzing the PS4 and I also seen the PS three and analysis and I kind of got an idea of what I wanted to talk about as far as my take on it uh, just because all the rehashness and the co contrast and comparison I think I also seen the 360 reveal too as well so my initial take on the PS5 is that I think it was a good reveal I think a lot of games were shown. I think I look at Twitter, and I think everybody's kind of in agreement that while, I mean, you can nitpick and I guess call out some of the inconsistencies or whatever, um, or some of the questions that <laughs> people might have. Uh, one of my questions, I guess the biggest question in my mind, and I don't know, write in the comments and let me know what you think, but the biggest com, the big biggest question in my mind is that, like, what's up with these two consoles? Now I know one was supposed to be, like, a lesser version of the console or whatnot, but my thoughts are that may not be the case it's just one has a disc and one does not so I'm trying to figure out what's going on with that now I know that consoles all in all they are moving to more discless type of uh, I guess skew or whatnot. but my thing is is that like, what is this disc going to offer? Am I going to be able to play HD or uh, UHD movies with this? <laughs> I mean, I guess it might be my question. Am I going to be able to play UHD? Am I going to be able to play 4K? And is it going to be HDR? You know, I guess that will be my question with the disc. Like, what benefits am I getting from the disc? Because, obviously, the disc list seems like it will be less or will cost less so I guess that would be the question what benefits outside of it being a physical media are you getting out of the disc so but the way it looks is that <laughs> it's just going to do nothing but play games so and that would probably be my f safe assumption but Anyway, that would be kind of some of the questions. Uh, another question I guess I would have is, like, what is the camera? Now, I know, I, actually, like again, there's a lot of parallels with the reveal because I was just watching the PS4 reveal, and they was talking about the camera. And so they're releasing the camera, and I'm hoping that I don't have to buy that camera when I buy the PS5 because like it's going to cost more by virtue of me having that camera. 
Now, if they got some type of deal going, yeah. I mean, I bought my PS4 with a camera, but um, they just kind of shoehorned that in there. I'm just kind of wondering, what are we doing with the camera? So, and I know the obvious, you know, it's probably for the controllers or whatever, but I don't want the camera to have to be on in order for me to use the controllers. So, <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. So I would have questions with that. Uh, the design of the console was fabulous. I'm not going to go through all the games. Uh, I didn't even take notes. So please excuse me. If, because half of these games, I ain't going to know the name. But I will start out with like Resident Evil 8. I mean, I think that's going to be uh, a game that is probably going to be multi-platform. So all the ponies out there don't think that that is something that's exclusive to this PlayStation. That is coming out for Xbox. I look forward to playing it on Xbox. I think that's one of those games that you're going to be able to see the difference in power between the Xbox and the PlayStation uh, just because of and I, I'm not saying the Xbox is better and the PlayStation is better but if they're developing ex explicitly for the PlayStation for example I think that you could be in a situation where you see uh, some uh, a couple of differences and excuse me for my my daughter's in the background. <laughs> my 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 daughter, she uh, she gets excited. But uh, I do think that that's one of those early games. You, typically, in the early games, is where you see the differences in between the consoles because they don't know either console and they don't understand necessarily how to get everything out of the console. So some things are done by the quick and dirty method they probably say hey look we don't have time to you know do this illumination for this rock <laughs> so they are gonna probably leave it there if it's not able to do it now if it's easier to program for the PlayStation then you probably in the early days see a lot of PlayStation games look better than the Xbox but slowly over time the Xbox will overtake the PlayStation because there's more compute units and there's more stuff you can do and I think the ray tracing is going to be more exclusive to the Xbox just the way the architecture is and things like that so you have that um, but again no matter what Resident Evil 8 looks like and all of the digital foundry details yes that I use that as a verb the digital foundry details <laughs> but uh, yeah no matter what the de details are uh, as far as the contrast and comparison between consoles of Resident Evil 8 I do think that is a blockbuster waiting to happen they're going back to the Resident Evil 7 roots and I think that's a relief because we've been getting a lot of remakes for the last two years and you can tell that they just kind of use that as a test case so that they can build something grander so we always like that um let's see here I, I'm excited about Horizon now Horizon it was one of those you know click flicks <laughs> you know you didn't really get to see a lot from the trailers and things like that but you can look and tell man they're using a lot of ray tracing I'm just hoping that they have a mode for it to go 60 frames per second really that's my whole deal with this next generation console like you gotta have a mode for people like me who want to see these games run 60 frames per second and turn off that ray tracing because I don't want to see the next generation consoles going 30 frames per second I hope they just don't do that I hope they don't do that I hope they don't do that I don't know what else to say 
Like, what other understanding do you need to understand that we want PC like gameplay? We don't want no no 4K 30 frames per second. We want 1080p 60. 70, 80, 90 <laughs> frames per second uh, as high as you can get it we want that frame rate up and the pixels down we want the post processing effects that you can put in there the, the tessellation the temporal, all of that other digital foundry yes I'm using digital foundry as a verb again digital foundry details <laughs> okay uh so um yeah i think that's kind of my take on that um and you know i guess i, I was kind of disappointed that they didn't have a god of war a lot of those games i think i seen one game where they had a lady kind of going through and you know I guess it was kind of like a Laura Croft slash space adventure type of scenario, but she was in a space suit, and, and uh, I think like when she died, like or she was able to start time over or something like that. I've seen a couple of those games, you know, uh, I, I, and I know we've been mostly streaming games and things like that on this channel but I remember I was talking about how like most story arcs I think I was playing Mortal Kombat at the time uh, the aftermath and most of the story arcs in movies and video games are going to time travel <laughs> so so yeah that seems to be the uh, uh, quick and dirty method for telling a story nowadays is to have timelines different timelines and things like that and and space travel and and time warping so they got a game based on that so and they got a couple of games based on that I guess one of them was more centered toward dying those two games and I don't know the name of them so forgive me for that but those are the type of games that I'm kind of looking at uh, and as far as playing uh, Ratchet and Clank is another one of those that you know quick and dirty uh, you know bailout type of uh, storylines that uses time travel but that Ratchet and Clank looked pretty good uh, and I think the girls would like it. My girls would like it. So that's pretty much it. I'm not going to spend 20 minutes talking about this. I'm going to talk about it in detail in a latter video. But that's kind of my thoughts. Tell me what y'all think about the PS5 reveal. Uh, what kind of trepidation do you have? <laughs> you know, did you like it? I, I, I give it, you know, a B minus. Uh, there's been greater reveals. I mean, they had a. You know, Grand Theft Auto 3 you know I could have left could have left that out kind of had that as a footnote you have to put that as the first thing that you see <laughs> so but tell me what you think this is Al from Transformational Gaming and we're done